One of my favorite uh, parts of pastoring is welcoming new believers to the Lord and to their faith and to the church and welcoming those who have searched out a place of worship and landed here at the river. Some of those that go through our pathways uh, classes are new to the Lord and new to their faith and some are just new to the river but well established in their faith or growing in their faith. And so today we welcome another group that graduated from our uh, May Pathways. Our next Pathways class starts July 9th with a lunch following the service. And if you have not been through Pathways and you're sitting in this room or watching online, you can sign up on the church website, rivervalleylifecenter.com, and you can do it through the church app. And you can also see Betsy, who's coming up here real fast to join me. <clears throat> She'll be in that same shirt when church is over. <laughs> so you can recognize her. And uh, she's joining us up front. And I want to welcome to the river, Larna Red. Yes, sir. You can applaud these people as they come. Cody Hart. Kathy Sheets, Amy Thomas, Joe Bone and Penny Bone, Johnny Burgoon, Rita Miller, Amanda Busey, Kenny Canfield, he's had some surgery, so he's got wheels on today, and Sharon Adams, and there are four more that attended the lunch but weren't able to complete the course. You're welcome to do that in the July class, so don't forget to sign up so we know you're coming and you can complete that class then as well. This is the study course you'll go through. We finally got it in real print, and they'll put you through this in a lunch session class and then two more early morning, Sunday morning class sessions. It's very, very intriguing information. It's not a Bible study course. It's a course about how to connect at the river and connect well and uh, the processes we go by here to get you in a place to serve. All right. Here's what we're going to say. We're going to say welcome to the river and welcome home. Everybody ready? Welcome to the river and welcome home. Give them a great big hand. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Betsy, and your team. If anyone wants to serve alongside Betsy in this endeavor, uh, she could use a couple of good assistants, and she would welcome your administration gifts and gifts of service. Okay. Greg, it's your turn. We're taking turns today. Good morning, everyone. It has been a good morning, hasn't it? It's a great morning. So this morning, um, first of all, let me um, release the children to class. And remember, you're going to your next class up today from graduation Sunday last week. And the... the declaration that begins today is talking about seed, and there's a lot of good things going on in the spring season. Um, we put seed in the ground, and 
that yields a crop later in the season as it grows. And it's no different in kingdom principle. Um, We sow seed in the way of our money, which we have exchanged for time and our life. And we put that seed in the ground for a multitude of things. It does produce a harvest. And all those little babies walking out, all the people standing up here in front just a few minutes ago, the sending for Troy and Jamie and Trina, those are all things that your seed helps to produce, to go out and share the lo- his love with the world and produce more believers that one day we'll celebrate and rejoice in heaven together. Amen? But Today, we get to sow our seed and declare over it that it will produce a harvest beyond all we can ask or think. Amen. So we've stood a lot today, so I'll let you sit down. But if you'll read with me. Yes. I declare that there's power in the seed. Galatians 6 says that what I sow, I will reap. As I give my tithe and sow my offering as a seed back to God, I anticipate abundant harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. There are offering boxes. Yes. There are offering boxes at each exit from the sanctuary. Just drop that um, tithe and offering in those boxes as you exit the sanctuary. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Amen. If you're watching online, you can give online. You can give text to give. There are uh, portals and ways that you can easily access all of that. And I want to welcome uh, not just those watching online, but those that are here for the first time today. If you're here for your first time, we are so glad you're here. We're excited that you've come. We don't know exactly what might have brought you here, but we just believe that it's not an accident. There's something here the Lord has in store for you and somebody he wants you to meet. Let's welcome everyone that's come for the first time today. Amen. If you would, if you wouldn't mind, just fill out that little small card that says first time there. You can have that information for your own, uh, uh, information for you and you can also if you've been here once or twice and you haven't filled out that second time card uh, we get real excited about those because those are the real brave ones that come back at at least one more time right so we're excited that that you've enjoyed your time of worship today and we trust that the Lord will speak something to you through his word we preach the word of God We don't skip over any scriptures or cut and paste the scriptures. We just preach it as it is. And uh, man has worked really long and hard through the years to develop religions based on pieces of scripture that they pulled out. And we said, let's just take the whole book. Let's just go back and read the whole thing. We don't have to stick to what headquarters says. We can preach it all. And we don't have to skip over anything or explain away anything. We just go ahead and say, okay. Amen? The New Testament church raised the dead. We don't have to explain that away. We just go ahead and say, okay, we can raise the dead. Amen? Hallelujah. They uh, baptized by immersion in the book of Acts. And we just said, if they could do it, we can do it. A lot of folks spend a lot of time explaining away how this or that was done away with. The book of Acts don't have a a last chapter. Do you know there's not a last chapter to the book of Acts? It just kind of leaves you hanging when you read it. You're like, well, isn't there an end? Most books have an end. Apostle Paul wrote letters and he would end. He would say, in the name of our Lord, amen. Amen. Our God bless you all. Amen. Book of Acts don't have that because we are still living it. 
He's still breaking chains. He's still healing the sick. He's still baptizing people with the Holy Ghost. Today, we had two receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost last Sunday with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Wow, that's a miracle. I heard a testimony this week of a marriage that's being restored, and it's miraculous. Amen. That's, that's one of the hard ones right there. When you really love somebody and you really get hurt by that person you love, it's really hard to get that back. But God. Woo! He will. He can. And he does. <laughs> he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. He turned me around. Picked me up out of the muck and the mire. Someone was delivered of depression last week. Went from a dark, low, gloomy place to a bright, he's the lifter of my head. He'll turn that frown upside down, won't he? Amen. And today we're going to baptize someone in water. Water's ready and warm. Thank the Lord. So I'm going to... Uh, give you part two of the message two weeks ago on the sweet aroma of servitude. And I'm going to recap a little. Two weeks ago, we talked about how precious uh, was that alabaster box, that it made a sweet aroma in a room. In a room where when Jesus walked into the room, there was a stench an odor of religiosity, of judgmentalism, the odor of I'm right and you're wrong. You know how that stinks? I've literally been to conferences that just the air stunk because everybody felt like they had this gospel in a corner in a box that and nobody else had it figured out like they did. And that stinks, okay? If you're one of those people that thinks you, you got religion right and everybody else has got it wrong, your attitude stinks to God. All Christians are all washed up. All churches are all just, churches are just all a mess and religion's all a mess. And I went to church one time and there's a bunch of hypocrites that attitude stinks. But I walked into this room today and a sweet aroma filled this house. Somebody had been walking and praying. Somebody had been anointing the, the chairs and the carpet and the doors. Somebody had been serving with a vacuum sweeper and a broom. And somebody had been putting envelopes neatly in the backs of the chairs and, and cards for the visitors. And somebody was attending the hayloft and greeting at the door. The sweet aroma of servitude, it just smells good. In that old barn over there, we had to fight the stench <laughs> of some residue of old farm stuff. You can say stuff in the pulpit. Trust me, I have said stuff before. But the old bats and the raccoons and the goats and cows and horses and dogs and cats occupied that space and we filled that room with the sweet aroma of servitude. I started that message last week with a story, uh, a little poem titled Somebody Else. Remember that? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Remember that uh, great, anointed, powerful person that just did everything in the church named somebody else? And I thought that was so poignant to, to us in this day and time. 
So I have a friend, a long-time friend, and haven't seen him in 40 years, but we used to be close together in ministry and that sort of thing. His name is Steve Fender, and I follow him on Facebook. He has a large church there, and I've been reading some of his stuff, and I recommended some of my pastor friends to get on there and follow him, but he, he made a couple quotes or coined a couple of things that I wanted to share with you today off of Facebook. Can I preach a little Facebook? <laughs> you read it more than you read the Bible. What are you talking about? Don't sit there and act like I'm carnal. I'm just like you are. Nosy. Yeah, nosy. <laughs> so look here, did you know that? I didn't know that. So Steve Fender wrote this, and I wanted you to hear it. It says, if we are disappointed in Christian corporations, Christian politicians, Christian celebrities, our confidence might have been misplaced. Every great Christian I have ever known was a servant in a local church. I think that's pretty deep. We look up to the wrong people. You know who I look up to? I look up to the person I find in the church when I show up unannounced, praying, serving, picking up stuff, running the vacuum, straightening up chairs, kneeling down on the floor to get some, somebody's gum or coffee stain out. That's who I admire. That's who I look up to. That's who I believe we're going to greet in heaven. Crowns will be given. And the crowns will not be uh, only assigned to those we call famous Christians. They won't be just for the big names. And it won't matter how often you were on TBN when those crowns are given. He wrote another that I thought was worth repeating. I'm a much bigger admirer of character, kindness, love, compassion, and godliness than I am of singing, preaching, acting, or athletic abilities. All of my heroes are in the pews. The greatest achievement in this world is to be a genuine Christian. Amen. God is love. I was singing the song the other day, I don't know why Jesus loved me, and then it hit me. I do know why Jesus loved me. Because God is love. He couldn't help but love me. And that song that they sang today, there's nothing you can do to change it. God's love for... Hey, you can mess up my love for you. You can mess up your spouse's love for you and your children's love for you, but you can't mess up God's love for you. You can't change how much he loves you. And don't mistake that for it's okay to just live anyway and do anything. Because you can change your own environment and how you relate to that love by your actions. And you can change your eternal destiny by your actions. But you can't change his love for you. He's reaching for you. He's breaking down walls for you. He'll move mountains to get you in his arms again. He loves you, loves you, loves you. We start with Matthew 20 in the message translation. Matthew 20, verse 26. He says, it's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to 
be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who were held hostage. Every bit of service you do for the kingdom of God has an effect, an eternal impact on a soul. Just picture a lost soul and know that cleaning up that mess or setting up that table or straightening up the, the room that you're in, leaving the place of God better than you found it is one piece of reaching a soul for the kingdom of God. Winning a battle that is absolutely for you and your side and your team. Everything you do, not just in this building. I, I talk about the church because that's where, this is where I work. This is where I serve. But do, do you know that sitting among us today are public servants who've given their whole life to going out and serving and rescuing and helping people, police officers, firefighters, nurses, doctors, politicians, all kinds of community service people, school teachers. That's, that's laying down your life. Amen? So they're making a difference, all of you, in whatever way you serve. Somebody in this church would probably fix my air conditioner tomorrow at my house. And that'll help the kingdom. <laughs> it really will. I'll get more sleep and uh, be nicer. hopefully I'll be nicer to people and that'll help Jesus' image <laughs> a little bit. Amen. Jesus served his disciples. And Paula and I are here to serve you. We're not here to just entertain you or, or you know, make you feel good. We hope you feel good. We hope you feel better. Getting rid of your sin will make you feel better because you'll live better, you'll do better, you'll have peace with God, you'll sleep better. Amen? And... Uh, People say, how do you just lay down and just fall asleep at night? And as we used to say down south, it's that clean living. That's how they said it down. It's clean living. If you can lay down at night and, and you have peace with God and you know you've done the best you can do for that day and grace has empowered you to, to live your life out at peace with men, it's a good thing and it's good to be able to just Rest in him and fall asleep. He gives his beloved sweet sleep, the Bible said. I want to share a little bit of my story. Is it okay if we talk about me? There's a country song written about that. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about my. But I, I think it's been a long time since I shared my story with you and how I've got to be in ministry and, and do what I do. and uh, I love my life. I have an incredible life. I'm not one of those pastors that gets on Facebook and says, I really love the work of the Lord. It's the people that I have a problem with. I don't have a problem with people. I love people. I love being around people. I love being at your parties and, and your fellowships and your grow groups. And I love being here on Sunday and don't want to leave. I'm Sometimes nearly the last one to leave. I can't say I'm the last one to leave because Dave Conner goes to this church. And, and, and I dare you to try to beat him at being the last one to leave. Have you ever done it, Jed? No, you, you've never stayed past him, have you? <laughs> they have him in their grow group, they say. He's a champ. He's the champ of Grow Group, last one to leave. We're talking about him today, Tyler, since he's not here, right? And he, I know he's watching that camera right now. But uh, thank God for somebody that will lock the doors and check the security and clean up the last little scraps and be the last one to leave and, and love to be that. And that's the calling of God for sure on our brother Dave, isn't it? 
So I've, uh, I've been a part of about four or five different churches in my life. I never was a, a church hopper or church shopper or church swapper in my life. I've been a more stable uh, sort of guy and been graced to have that stability. Some of you have looked and looked and looked until you found the river. And I, I don't fault you for that. I'm glad of the journey you've had, the path you've taken, and I pray that you find stability in this house. I pray that we are a fit for you. Uh, we are not a fit for everybody, but we're a fit for a lot of folks, and we're going to make room for more folks because we believe God's just all about growing and things he plants and waters and and sows and you know and, and puts his light on they're going to grow and we're going to outgrow this building and we pretty getting pretty close to that now but uh, I was born and raised in in Myrtle Mississippi I was born in Holly Springs how many of you ever been to Holly Springs Mississippi wow wow there's a there's a mini Graceland at Holly Springs, Mississippi, and it opens at midnight. And it opened till like three in the morning. Lindsay visited it one time bravely, but uh, Holly Springs is known for Rust College. How many of you ever signed up to go to Rust College? Nobody. I'm from nowhere. Just so you know. Um, there are some famous people from Holly Springs, not me, but, um, what was the news guys? Shepard Smith, Shepherd Smith um, Fox News back in the day. He was born and raised in Holly Springs, Mississippi. His daddy and my family had interactions in business and stuff. His dad was called Shep Smith and everybody knew Shep Smith, but, uh, there's been a few famous people come out of there and out of Russ College and so forth. But that was my roots. That's my heritage. I was born on a Sunday in uh, 1959 and raised up in a little church that grew to about 200 people. And we outgrew our building. We built a building similar to this in New Albany, Mississippi. We moved to the city. How many of you ever been to New Albany, Mississippi? I know Tim and Betty visited there one time. That's it. Nobody else. Still nowhere. Right? I mean, Mississippi's bad enough, but everybody knows about Tupelo, Jackson, and Biloxi. So I served under my dad, who was the pastor, and, and doing what pastor's kids do. You know, I served in every capacity that you can name. Served in cleaning, praying, Unclogging toilets, um, yeah, digging sewer lines, construction projects. We remodeled and rebuilt and added on to the church as it grew, as we do. And so I was in on that. And then my grandfather was a pastor. And I think, uh, Sean, you probably remember my grandpa, Brother J. Frank Wilson. He built onto his church 19 times before he died. And, uh, and then they built a new one after he died. Uh, Mark, you remember my, my grandpa. Yeah, Mark Henderson. Yeah. And uh, then I went to Jackson, Mississippi, to the big city, to Bible College. And I immediately went to church uh, there as, as a part of the college. You had to go to the church. But the church hired me because the pastor knew my dad and he knew... Uh, the work ethic and, and that I would be familiar with the surroundings. So he put me to work in the church. So I worked and served there, setting up chairs and tables and cleaning up and putting away chairs and tables for events and serving and setting up the stage and the sound systems and instruments and all that stuff. So that was my, my second stint of, of serving in a church. And then moved back to Myrtle where they, they made me the music minister and uh, the church then moved to New Albany where, uh, where I went to church there with my wife Paula and we served the Lord there in music ministry for a few years and I was the district youth president, I was the school principal of the Christian school, 
I was the assistant pastor. I was the music minister. I was a husband. Thank God I wasn't a father yet. And I was the softball coach and the basketball coach of the school and the basketball coach of the men's uh, team and played in three basketball leagues myself a week. I was busy. And then I started resigning stuff. I found out that you can only do so much, and I was not Superman. And uh, my wife helped me learn that. (laughs) Thank God for my wife. And then uh, Paula and I felt the leading of the Holy Ghost to leave New Albany, Mississippi, the great metropolis and famous city, and move to Springfield, Missouri. How many of you have ever been to Springfield, Missouri, on Interstate 44, almost into Oklahoma? Yes. Ah, We're getting famous now. We're getting more well-known. The headquarters of the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ is located in Springfield, Missouri. Assemblies of God. What did I say? Oh, yeah, don't get God and the Lord Jesus Christ confused. Oh, they are the same. I remember now. Anyway, the Assemblies of God headquarters is in Springfield, Missouri, on Boonville Avenue. And uh, we lived there and served uh, our pastor there. And then in the fall of 1986, many of you were not born yet, but... In the fall of 1986, uh, the Lord called us on the telephone in the voice of Mike Bingham and said, there's a church in Lancaster, Ohio, looking for a music minister. Are you interested? And at the time, I was working for $6 an hour, mixing mud for a block layer and getting 26 hours a week and not making enough money to live. And so I was interested. Isn't it amazing how you can find the will of God when you don't have any other choice? It happens. And so we, we had a, a 1970 pickup truck. It was paid for. And we drove that here with a shell on the back so we could put our luggage in there. And we drove that here to Lancaster in 1987, January. We moved here, relocated our family And I served in a church across town for eight and a half or nine and a half, nine and a half years uh, under two different pastors. And I can honestly say I enjoyed my time serving alongside some wonderful people and serving with and for wonderful people and wonderful pastors and God did nothing but favor us and grace us and bless us in, those, in that time. But I'll have to tell you, I never, ever did anything but my very best in Myrtle, Jackson, New Albany, Springfield, and Lancaster. I gave 100%. I feel good as an old man old enough to retire. I feel good about the years I served in ministry under other ministries. So when I, when I share with you about serving, I'm not trying to recruit you. I'm not trying to motivate you. I'm not trying to get you to do something that I'm not willing to do. I'm not trying to get you to do the dirty work. Cindy's worked alongside me, and there's no, no task too small or too belittling that I wouldn't do it. Amen? I just want to impart that character into all of us that God is not looking to raise up a generation of fame and glamour and bright lights and and smoke and mirrors and fancy singers and better preachers. God's trying to raise up an army, foot soldiers, somebody that will get the job done. And he's appointed and anointed people like me to help bring that to pass and put that together and encourage and love and open the doors and open the opportunities for you to serve. And I don't know if I'll get to my sermon or not, but I wanted you to know a little bit about me. In, in my 40 years 
uh, 43 years now. I started in 1980, Brother Chris. Were you born yet? You were? He was about six months old. I started serving the Lord. And uh, in my 43 years, I've lost two fellow uh, music ministers to AIDS. I lost three pastors to immorality in 43 years that disappointed me, let me down. I found out their lifestyle outside of the platform and outside of the church walls was less than Christian. They were not setting a good example. So if you've ever been hurt by religion or or let down by someone that you looked up to, just know you're not alone in that. You're not the only one that's cried yourself to sleep because somebody disappointed you. In 1986, I had a nervous breakdown. Woke up woke up in the middle of the night shaking and climbing the wall and vomiting and sick because my heart was just torn all to pieces. But God, his grace is sufficient. He can heal whatever is broken in your life. He can shatter the prison walls of fear, disappointment, heartache, pain, whatever's stopping you from being that vessel that Sarah spoke about. When we, when we, the picture I always had of a vessel in the Bible was a, a pot. But God showed me a few years ago, a vessel is more like a blood vessel because we're a body. It's more like a conduit through which God flows. And the neat thing about that is the pipe also gets to experience the glory. When you feel like you're just giving and giving, you are, but you're getting and getting. It's a nice and wonderful thing to be in the life flow of who God is and what he's doing. Don't let the enemy mess with your mind and show you some poor examples of Christianity and clog up the pipe and say, I'll never serve again. I'll never tithe again. I'll never give again. I'll never do this or that again. Some, I've run into some bitter folks in church. I asked an elder one time, would he close the service in prayer? And he said, nope. I said, what's wrong, brother? He said, last time I did that, the pastor did this, this, this. And I said, I'll never close the service in prayer again. Don't let the enemy play with your mind like that. He died a bitter man. And, and unforgiveness and, and pain and hurt can cause you to shut yourself off and close yourself off and quit. There's not a soul in this room serving the Lord today that hasn't at some point in time had an excuse to never do it again. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have said, I'll never go to another grow group because of an incident that happened in a grow group or somebody leading a grow group let them down. People that say, I'll never step foot in another church door. Some of you sitting in here right now. You said that, but you didn't really mean it. Here you are. Grace and mercy can cover you. It can help you. It can get you past those things. Don't let bitterness and unforgiveness stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Today, somebody is going to beat the fear of stepping into your calling. Today, somebody's going to step outside of their comfort zone, break the walls of prison that's had you bound, and you're going to find something that motivates you, something that you're passionate about, that you can do for the kingdom of God that will put light into dark places by the work of your hands. Amen. Woo. In a few minutes, I'm going to call up our greeters team. 
one of the most faithful services that we have here. Now, some churches, if, if people can't do anything, they're not talented enough to do anything, they, they, they let them greet because that, you know, that's, oh, no, oh, no, ma'am. The greeters in this house are some of the most talented, gifted, anointed, spirit-filled people in the church. You better believe it. And they love this place and they love you. I, the people standing in that door that give the first impression, I want them to be the river inside and out. I want them to glow with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Smiling from ear to ear, grinning like a possum eating briars. Amen? Woo! Look alive. Come alive. Be anointed. Say, man, I've got I've to preach tonight. I'm really going to pray. If you've got to greet today, you better pray. Amen. You never know what you're going to face out there. You never know what's coming through. You may, somebody may come through that door that's considering suicide. They need a greeter anointed full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody spiritually in tune with the gifts of the Spirit flowing in you. God can give you a word of knowledge for somebody when they come in and you can greet them and get to know them and then when the time comes to bring them to prayer, they already know you. They already understand that you care. They already felt your warmth and they'll come and pray with you. Yes. Greeters ought to be the first ones at the altar with a friend, with a new acquaintance, with somebody they saw come in and say, they look like they could use some prayer. I'm going to get them today and pray with them and cry with them and hug them and love them. Amen? Yes. Oh, yeah. If you want to serve the Lord, you can find an excuse or you can find an example. Show me a hypocrite and I'll show you ten real, yes, genuine, yes, humble servants of the Most High God. Show me a corrupt pastor and I'll show you 10 that are serving people, loving people, giving themselves, bivocational pastors who work hard all week long and then set up a church on Sunday and preach the gospel and visit the sick. Amen? Oh yeah, they're getting it done. Heaven's gonna be a wonderful place. Glory to God. If your example of Christianity, the best example you have of Christianity is someone in a pulpit or on a stage, then you don't know Christianity at all. What you are witnessing when you see them on television or see them up here on this stage, what you're witnessing is a gift. You're only seeing what they let you see. If you want to really know a real Christian, just get in the trenches and start serving alongside somebody. Get down where it's dirty. Go help out in a soup line. Get on the floor with somebody and clean some gum out of the carpet. If you really want to know a real Christian, follow somebody around all week that's doing it day after day after day. You'll find an example. Sign up to serve. Get on a team. Meet Jesus where he shines the brightest. He shines the brightest when someone's on a ladder cleaning a window. He shines the brightest when someone's changing a light bulb. He shines the brightest when someone's shoveling snow off the church walks or clearing the parking lot. He shines the brightest when someone's standing on the parking lot on Sunday to help someone get in the door that's elderly or Disabled. He shines the brightest when you hold the door open for that mother with a baby in one arm and a toddler in the other. Amen? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You don't need a badge for that. You don't need a training for that. You just need to be real. Be prayed up. Be a good Christian. Be a brother or a sister to someone in need. All of us are greeters. I, I said I'm going to lay hands on the greeters. We have a greeting team, and I'm going to lay hands on them and pray over them, but... We're all greeters. We're all parking lot attendants. Y'all have a parking lot ministry? Yes, we do. 
Amen? And a Walmart ministry and a Kroger ministry and a Meyer ministry and a Lancaster Public School ministry. Amen? Ohio University ministry, Ohio State ministry. We have ministries at the prison. We have ministries all over the place because you are equipped for the work of your ministry. Amen? We have a coroner's ministry. Who in the world can represent Jesus more than someone who's witnessing a family in loss? Thank God for that ministry that's there to show grace and love to someone when they're in the lowest point of their life. Hallelujah. Join the givers. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost, when God saved your soul, we are all thankful that he took us from death to life, from darkness to light, that he saved us from hell to a pathway to heaven. But the pathway to heaven is not just some free, slippery slope that you can just get on and say, woo I'm going in the right direction. Whee! No, it's the, del- it's the power of God to enable you to do what he called you to do when you came out of your mother's womb. You had a destiny and a purpose and a plan. God put something in you that you need to let out. When God called you, he, he called you to get you from being a taker to being a giver. Little Sayla right now, she's almost two weeks old, and she's a taker. She gives some love and some smiles and that sort of thing, but she's not getting a lot done during the day <laughs> or at night. She would not help me clean out the garage yesterday. She didn't want no part of it. But at some point in her life, she will transition from taker to giver. Some of you came to the Lord and you were just flat out takers. You were consumers of God's resources in the earth. But God wants to change you over to a giver. Take that old selfishness out of you. That old, it's mine, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. Turn it around. That's the transforming power of God is more than just a good feeling. It's more than just heaven and hell. It's about getting you on a path to where your life is productive. Your life is giving. You leave the earth better than you found it. You leave the room better than you found it. You leave your house better than you found it. You leave your car better than you found it. Any place you go, you leave it better than you found it. That's the gospel. That's the message. That's what Christianity is about. You go in a hospital room, leave it better than you found it. I used, I've been around preachers that go in a hospital room, and I had one guy tell me one time, his own mother came to visit him in the hospital. He broke his leg. He said she walked up to his bed and said, I told you. If you don't get right with God, this is just the beginning of what's going to happen to you. Well, that's some kind of ministry, isn't it? Go, I've heard people go in a hospital room and visit somebody sick. What's wrong with you? Well, I got humped up in Oh, man. I had a cousin died from that. <laughs> and that's not what Jesus does, amen? No. Use your voice, your mouth, your words to edify, to build up the body of Christ. Amen? Don't tell a person that just had hip surgery how bad your hip surgery recovery was. Oh, man, mine was a lot worse than yours. You're in for some rough days, buddy. Better get ready. It's going to be bad. 
Just look at them and say, no, it's not. It's going to be good when you leave. Oh, man. We talked about the hindrances to uh, serving, but in closing, I want to uh, share something that happened to me recently. I had somebody s- serving at my house, and I offered to pay them, and they shared this story with me. He said, I mowed my dad's grass for two or three years, and one, one day... He offered to give me a tool of his, and he said, you've been, you've been mowing this grass for all these years, and, and you want to borrow my tool, and I'm just going to give it to you. You've been so good to me, I'm just going to give this tool to you. And the son said, no. No, no, no. He said, I mowed your grass Because I love you. I will not take a payment or exchange for what I did for love. It's a powerful thing when our relationships are built on love and love alone. And when, because love does not keep score. See, if you're on the receiving end of love, and you don't understand that concept, you constantly feel a little guilty because they're giving more than you can give back. But love will set you free to receive and say, boy, they love me. I love them. I love that they love me and they're giving to me and I'm going to, with grace, receive this love. That's a gift. Not a lot of people can humble themselves to that place of feeling like they don't owe you something for being served. Now, there are folks who don't mind a bit to take, 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 and then ask you for more. I was three years old, and a man gave me a piece of gum one day. My daddy said, what are you supposed to say? I said, you got any more? (laughs) I think he meant for me to say thank you. (laughs) But... There are those kind of people, and I'll tell you right now, when I've run into those kind of people, I'm done. (laughs) Amen? But he said, I'll take that tool that you want to give me, Dad, only if you give it to me because you love me. And his dad, he said, my dad was one of those old rough guys from the way back, and he, he didn't say I love you much, you know, and he... He was uncomfortable with this conversation. He said, but he just kind of dropped his head and he said, okay, I love you, son. You can have it. He said, all right, I'll take it. But if we get into this capitalistic love, we mess it up. How many times you hear people say, man, I have give, give, give. After all I've done for you, And you, would, and you would do this to me. We keep score. We forget that love don't keep score. Love is love. I love you because I love you. You, you don't owe me anything, by the way. Does that feel pretty good? Yeah, it's, it's good to know, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew you were worried. But no. <laughs> we don't owe anybody anything. Look, here's my closing scripture. Romans 13, 8, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. If we can get this piece, you talk about a serving church, you talk about a free church, we'll be one of a kind. If we can get this right here. Oh, no man anything. I've had to look at people before and look them right in the eye and say, You know something? I don't know where you got confused. I don't know how you got off track on this. But the church of the living God owes you absolutely nothing. I know pastors that are over a barrel because somebody wrote a million dollar check and said, I'm going to give this and I want to see dot, dot, dot. And 
You just take your million dollar check right on back. Don't bring that business in here. Don't taint the work of God with your money. Amen? Oh, no, man. We don't, we don't owe you. God don't owe See, the bottom line is this. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've served the Lord for 99 years. He don't owe you squat. This whole capitalistic religion is garbage. People say, man, if God was going to bless anybody, he'd bless him. Uh Uh-uh. No, God blesses who he wants to bless. He don't don't bless you because you've been so good. Now, I've been blessed, and I try to be good, but God don't owe me squat. All you got to do is revisit the cross just for a few minutes. It don't take long. And you realize he paid a debt he did not owe because I owed a debt I could not pay, cannot pay, never will pay what I owe to him. I've worked hard for my Lord. Nobody's accused me of being lazy or not showing up or dragging my feet ever. But he owes me absolutely nothing. I will never repay him for the debt of love I owe. And all he wants me to do is not work, not serve, not give, just love him. Just love me, he says. Show me your love. Give me your love. That's all I want. He don't need my money. He don't need my time. He don't need all this other talent and gifts and abilities. He just wants my love. And then my talent, my time, my serving, my giving, my working, it'll all just happen by love. Not keeping score. Not checking it off. Whew. Love, baptism of love, outpouring of love, revival of love in this house and out there in the world. Revive us with that love that we cannot deny. Stand to your feet. The baptism, they're getting ready for baptism. I want to invite all the greeters of this house to the front of the room. Jeanette Evans is our greeting director. She does an excellent job coordinating the greeters. They are faithful. They are dedicated. I think they make her job pretty easy because they're so wonderful, a group of people. And I invite them to come today. And as a church, we're going to bless our greeters. I'm going to lay hands on them. Pastor, yeah. somebody told me last week that the first time they came to this place, they walked in the foyer after a difficult day, a real difficult morning. And the people in that foyer made them feel like they had been waiting on them all of their life. Woo! That person's <laughs> here today and he's never turned back. Amen. That's what our greeters do. Amen. Here's what I feel today for the greeters. I'm not going to anoint your head as we often do. I'm going to anoint your hands. You have a service gift. Your smile and your helping hands is the most important part of this ministry. He's my glory and the lifter of my head, your countenance. Hallelujah. You didn't always have that smile, but God. Hallelujah. Don't you love this? Amen. What a great team. You've done a great job with this team. And today, others will be wanting to sign up for this team. And today, we anoint your hands. So if you would, just put your hands out like you're serving. 
and we're going to go down through here and anoint you. Everybody, just extend your hands in their direction and begin to bless this team of greeters and the leadership that's in this house. We thank you, Lord, for these willing servants that you have called to the ministry. You've called them to the anointed ministry of presenting you as the first impression, the face of Jesus. <laughs> Let them, O oh Lord, carry a special anointing today. Renew them, Lord Jesus, uh, with your word alive in them. Quicken them. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Let them never be ashamed to obey your voice and speak as you speak. Uh, greet as you greet. Let them always remember that they are Jesus to those who come and welcome into this house. That they are the doorkeepers in the house of the Lord. As the psalmist David said, I would choose to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. May they be as the psalmist. May their face and their countenance and their spirit always say, you are welcome here. Yes. May they always say, Jesus loves you and we love you and we're glad to see you. Anoint their hands to shake hands. Anoint their hands to give hugs. Anoint their hands to give a pat on the shoulder a pat on the head to a child, a kiss to a baby. Let them, O oh Lord, be anointed in the ministry that you've called them to do. This is a high calling. This is the ministry of the Lord. And this is ordained from the beginning of the old tabernacle. God has always ordained that there be doorkeepers in the house of the Lord. That the people, the saints of God who are faithful are greeted and welcomed and those who are new are greeted and welcomed and you play that part and you do it so well. Thank you, Jesus. Could somebody praise God for our team of greeters? What a great team. What a great leadership. Oh, hallelujah. Myself, I give myself to you. Sing it to the Lord. It's your prayer. Give that prayer up to the Lord Jesus right now. I give myself, I give myself to you. Give yourself to the Lord. He hears you. My life is not my own. Hallelujah. To you I belong. I give myself, give myself to you. She has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And amen. Thank God. And she wants to get baptized 
in the way that they did in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, they were baptized, they received the Holy Ghost, and then there was one place where the Holy Ghost fell on them, and then they got baptized. A couple places, actually, where the Holy Ghost fell on them, and then they got baptized. So if you have the Holy Ghost and you haven't been baptized, you can be baptized. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost and you haven't been baptized, you can repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus as they were in the book of Acts. If they were able to do that, we're able to do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for water baptism. Becca Mowry, we baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah to God. Glory, glory, glory.
and you yielded your life to the Lord Jesus fully and completely and you want to walk with him and you have committed to do that we want to know that we want to meet you you can come to the front you can let a usher or an elder know let someone near you know and say would you take me to meet one of the elders and we will be happy to pray with you minister to you love you if you're a first time or second time guest right around the outside of those doors in between the doors right against the wall is our hayloft and we want to know more about you and see what we can do to help you connect if you have committed your life as a Christian and you're a member of the river and you want to get better connected out in the foyer Betsy is out there she can sign you up to pathways if you've been through pathways and you're not yet serving or you've heard the Lord call you to a new area of service today visit the tables that are set up out there and find out where the help is needed and let them know that you want to serve and let the Lord lead you in a greater path of service for him. There's a place for everyone. And don't think of it as great or small. Just think of it as your love for the Lord who loves you so much. Amen? Amen. So thank you for coming. Thank God for those that have been delivered today. Thank God for the baptism. And thank God for healing. You guys have a great and blessed week. We'll see you here Wednesday at 7. Chip Hall is going to be preaching Wednesday. Our River North Church pastor is preaching right here Wednesday night. You're not going to want to miss that. Chip, Pastor Chip Hall, River North.